My name's Dr. Gavin Mudd. I've been uh, looking at issues on the range of uranium mine now for more than a decade. It started development after a very controversial assessment process uh, in 1979 and first uranium was produced in 1981. So it's been producing uranium now for virtually 30 years. It's uh, majority owned uh, by Rio Tinto. The uh, operating company is of course Energy Resources of Australia. And so at the moment they're uh, currently allowed to keep producing until uh, uh, January 2021. Uh, and then there's a five year period for rehabilitation. So there's currently plans to look at adding a, a heap leach uh, operation into the existing open cut operation and uh, conventional mill, uh, and potentially also adding in an underground mine, which is what's called uh, Ranger 3 Deeps. Heap leach is a fairly common process in the mining industry, typically applied to, to copper or gold. It works where you've got very low levels or low concentrations of a particular metal in the rock. So it's not uh, economic to process through a normal sort of conventional mill. Uh, and so what you do is you pile up that rock into a large sort of uh, a large pile, a large dump. Uh, you sprinkle a chemical over the top through irrigation. And in this case, it might be sulfuric acid. Uh, and so that acid then trickles through that pile of rock. Uh, at the bottom of that, there would commonly be some sort of liner, like you know, high, high density polyethylene plastic. Uh, and then the uranium enriched solution uh, is then captured at the bottom of that pile in large ponds uh, and then sent away or pumped away for chemical processing say, and say extraction of the uranium. Uh, and so heap leaching would really complicate a lot of the management of water at Ranger uh, as well as tailings management. We know uh, this year in 2011 uh, ERA actually shut down the Ranger mill in uh, late January uh, because they were so worried about water levels in their, in their uh, tailing stand that they were worried that depending on the wet season it may actually fill up and, uh, and potentially overflow. It's a very low probability type of event but uh, quite catastrophic if it was to occur. If you look at it in, in one sense, like acid heat bleaching brings a whole bunch of extra risks along. That's, uh, but it's the transport of all the sulfuric acid through Kakadu into Ranger and that would be uh, significantly uh, expanded if the heat bleach was to proceed. But a lot of the risks, I, I think in a lot of ways, the, the real risks are it's just a different configuration. Ranger is by its very nature already a very risky operation. It's uh, got to manage tailings, it's got to manage water, it's got to manage processing, it's got to do all of these things you know, and make a buck for its, uh, uh, its owners, uh, but also in theory try and operate to world's best practice. Now in the last 10 years of Ranger, the, the, uh, the new millennia started with the 2000 uh, process water leak out of the tailings pipeline that went undetected for months. In 2002, they were incorrectly stockpiling ore at Ranger and uh, allowed radioactive, uh, radioactively contaminated uh, equipment to leave site. In 2004, they even managed to connect their process water um, you know, circuit within the mill to their drinking water supply and allowed, that allowed um, exposure of workers and so on at, at the site very significantly. So to this year where we've seen they came uh, you know, close to the brink of uh, you know, un unimaginable, you know, an actual tailing stand failure. Um, so in that sense, we've got, if world's best practice, it, they have to shut themselves down for five months because they haven't been managing processed water properly. Uh, I think you've really got to ask, well, you know, have they really demonstrated their capacity to manage the sort of the configuration of risks around heap leach? If there was to be an accident at the, at the heap leach side at Ranger, uh, the most um, uh, common way I suppose you would expect that to happen would be a big overflow event of all the, uh, the, uh, the, the acidic mm -hmm. metal radionuclide rich waters. Uh, and that would flow into the Majula Creek uh, and then sort of downstream into some of the wetlands and floodplain environment. Uh, you can only hope that if it was to proceed that that accident didn't happen, but uh, one has to remain concerned given ERA's record. If we look at Kakadu, it's a, it's a special place. We've known that for many decades and the great irony of history is that the first proposal for Kakadu National Park came from a, from a former uranium miner in the South Alligator Valley. We want to protect Kakadu, we want to make sure that it actually exists for future generations for millennia and Rangers had 30 odd years and I think really Ranger should uh, really be looking towards uh, every step towards rehabilitation. Uh, I don't believe that heap leaching and uh, potential underground expansion into Ranger 3 Deeps really achieves that. All it will do is prolong the risks that are being taken at Ranger uh, and therefore increase the, uh, the potential problems into the longer term. I think we should be looking at a scenario where Ranger does work towards rehabilitation, 
um, meet the sort of expectations of the Mirror and the Australian community, as well as the international community that really want to see Kakadu protected um, you know, for the future.